everybody, my name is Professor Sabor Isaac Barry from Barry's Science Lab. Today, welcome to part one of relativity. Right, now it was 1879 and two Germans had just born a child. Now, they decided to name this child a beautiful name, a majestic name. One that, although seemed common at the time, would be remembered for generations. Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein was a genius when he was a kid, really. He really mastered the element. He liked uh, math, physics, and excelled in those subjects, respectively. One of his math tutors, named Max Talmud, said at one point after he tutored him, soon uh, Einstein's mathematical genius became so high a um, mathematical genius's flight was so high that I could not fall. At least that was a paraphrasing of what he actually said. Uh, when he was 12, he learned geometry. Well, he learned a tiny bit of Euclidean geometry, at least by the 6th, 7th grade standards of the time, and all of algebra in just one summer by himself himself. He learned algebra and a bit of geometry in two months. Impressive, isn't it? But his mind and his achievements was only about to get more impressive. Now, the thing is, well, Germany is kind of unstable, so while there's tensions rising, and in the meanwhile, there's this angry mustache man, but we'll get to him later and how he uh, uh, affected Einstein's immigration to the United States. Anyway, when Einstein was 16, he took the entrance exam to a Swiss university, notably the Swiss, the Swiss Matura, it was called. Now, Matura is quite a unique name. It's used in Albania, well, in Romania, it's used in really the other countries that the Americans don't usually think of when they're thinking about Europe. Anyway, well, Einstein was still a genius for his age, and although he failed the general parts of the test, which were non-math and physics, he overly excelled in the subjects that were math and physics, getting a 6 out of 10. Just kidding, not 6 out of 10. That's just a dumpy school. Six was actually like four on our report cards, except ten times better and ten times rarer. Because six was literally the best, the absolute best, perfect highest score you could ever get in, in well, World War I Germany. So, well, really, Einstein's uh, profile went up after that. And people didn't quite notice him. But his family members, some of his close friends, and his classmates started paying attention to him and his ingenious thinking. Now, he graduated from middle school into high school. And little did he know, a 20-year-old Serbian named Maleva Mirik, she had also been attending the same polytechnic school he was in, notably well, not notably, but the ETH Zurich, which is basically just the ETH School of Zurich, if you guys wanted to know what that mysterious name meant. And then when they saw each other, they, well, how can I describe it? They romanced, which can mean, okay, we don't talk about that here on Barry Science Lab. Anyway, so now, when he graduated from high school, he got a job as a patent officer. But, well, he wasn't really satisfied with the job. As any great thinker of the time wouldn't be well satisfied with checking the you know, wrong, blatantly weird papers about weird inventions. So, in the meantime, he came up with some scientific ideas. And he published his first <clears throat> scientific paper in 1900. The conclusion of the phenomena of a capillary action, or at least something like that, because I cannot read German. In 1903, he 
he well married his longtime girlfriend, Maleva Mary. In 1905, he published four groundbreaking papers that would set the foundation of modern physics. One was about family and most, the other was about, well, mass energy equality. Uh, hashtag mass and energy are equal. The third one was about the photoelectric effect. And the final one, the one that is so effective, not effective, but rather, well, important to the series. The most important one for the series. Special relativity. Hmm. All right. So, first concept in special relativity, well, let's start with speed. You can see we are traveling at a speed of uh, around uh, 10 or 12 miles per hour with this Tesla. But the thing is, we are on a road. Let's say that road is being carried by a cruise. This is a weird, weirdly long road if it was to be carried by a cruise. But stick with me here, okay? Now let's say the cruise is traveling 50 miles per hour. Now, the crews are traveling 50 miles per hour. That our speed with respect to the Earth would be 62 miles per hour. 12 miles per hour from the car. Oh, 6 now. And 50 from the crews. But the thing is, the Earth is also moving at a speed of roughly 1,000 miles per hour. So let's add that into our equation. Suddenly, we get. 1,062 miles per hour with respect to the sun. At least if we put a little mark on it and then watch from the center of the sun, which would be, well, highly unlikely because it's going to burn up, but whatever. Let's say we observe from the center of the sun and we, like, look at the little dot that was your our car here and we would see it traveling at an astounding 1,062 miles per hour. But then, let's go to the center of the Milky Way, which is nearly impossible because there's a freaking black hole there. But let's say we remove the black hole, and we just focus on the regular stuff for now. We get sucked into the singularity and observe crap from there. So, when we observe stuff from the center of the Milky Way, then we see the the shining, glowing dot that is our car, moving at an astounding 384 freaking thousand 62. Because the sun, also remember, it orbits around the galaxy at a speed of 383,000 miles per hour. Make sure you get the idea of reference frames a little more though. Let's say we conduct an experiment. Let's say me and Refat are in space. Refat's my assistant and my brother. And let's say me and Refat are in space. From my perspective, I see him absolutely flying towards me. And then he waves high on the way past. And I wave high back and he just passes. But from his perspective, he doesn't know he's moving. He pictures himself as stationary, and he thinks that I'm moving towards him with the same speed, but opposite direction. And I'm the one waving high, and he's the one waving high back. Well, that's how reference frames work. Because nobody is necessarily wrong in reference frames. Everybody is right when it comes to reference frames. Because speed isn't actually absolute. It's relative. So the only thing that makes sure that you're actually air or move is acceleration. Because then, well, your velocity is constantly increasing. So you can't match that up with constant velocity, can you? But let's just go back to our constant velocity example for that. And say you're in the void. The void is just endless white nothingness. You're floating in the void. Now, go, don't get depressed for me over here. We still have some physics work to do. The uh, staff will teleport you out of the void via an anti interdimensional uh, highway uh, in 15 minutes. But in the meanwhile, you have to stay in the void, which is just endless nothingness with no sound, no walls, no nothing. So, 
Well, the void is pretty easy to get lost, and you also can't really tell if you're moving in the void. Because there are no structures, no landmarks, you aren't able to make a landmark because you have no building materials. There's really nothing. So there's no way, literally no way, to tell if something's happening. If you're moving or you're stationary. So, that is really the idea of our experiment. <clears throat> to simulate that without sight, without sound, uh, like a blind and deaf, like that one author, then there's no way to identify, absolutely no way to identify if you're moving or not. When no, uh, and uh, let's say if you're like on a truck, and you have the same thing, but except the road is completely smooth, no bumpy roads. Then can you tell? Nope. That's the thing. If you do no like landmarks around you, you can't hear anything. You're not accelerating, and you don't get any like rough push ups and downs. Then you don't even know. Are you moving or are you at rest? There are no kind of experiments you can conduct. Alright, well that's the idea of speed. Now, let's get to light speed. Fast. In the next episode, we'll discuss light speed. But for now, Professor Saborno signing out.